Hi, in this video we do another photo critique. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. If you haven't done so yet, head over to firstmanphotography.com, fill in your details to join the email list and I'll send you a free copy of the ebook on how to capture perfect exposure every time. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, so I've been contacted by Alex Wedlake and he's been shooting for about three years, he tells me, and he'd like me to take a look at some of his photos and give them a bit of a critique. He went for, on a trip around the US and Canada for about three months, I think particularly just for photography, so I'm hoping to see some good shots and some good work from Alex. He's currently shooting with a Canon 6D, which is a nice full frame camera, and he's using a 16 to 35 millimeter f4 lens. So he's got some good gear there. So it may be that I'm a little bit more critical to Alex's work than I would be to someone who's just starting out and not spent quite so much on gear. So let's get into the computer and see what Alex has to offer. Okay, so this is our first image and it's called the Dawlish Seafront. So this is Dawlish Seafront before sunset. And there we have the 24 to 105 f4 here connected to that 6D, like I mentioned. We've got f8 and a 10 second long exposure. So that, and that's produced this nice smoothed out water, but there's still some nice detail in there too. And overall, it's a nice image. It's a sort of classic leading line of a wall going into the sea. And then you've got a nice bit of color in the sky. And then this sort of bell or basket here at the end uh, where your sort of focus is drug, dragged to. And that's a, that nice red color as well. And overall, it is a nice image. It's a nice place to start for the critique. What I would say though, it would be that I'd just edge a little bit closer to the water. It might be a bit too much of a risk, so it's the right thing to do taking it from there, but I'd like to see it a little bit closer to the water and possibly have a slightly longer exposure to smooth that water out even more, get some more movement in those clouds, and I think it would become a better image for that. I'm going to be focusing on long exposure photography a little bit more over the next few weeks because it's really a passion of mine and I've talked about it in a previous video, but that was quite early on. But today, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to put the two filters together. So I'm going to look at a 16 soft production in first man photography. So I think it's time to revisit long exposure photography again. I'm going to be doing that in the next few weeks. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And you'll see those videos when they come out. So yeah, I'd get closer to the sea a little bit longer exposure, but it's a nice image. I'm quite happy that he's breached the rule of thirds here and he's got that horizon right down the middle. It works for this image. Let's move on to the next one. Now we have the Luckenbach storm, a beautiful thunderstorm just outside the small town of Luckenbach in Texas, USA. Now he's captured some great detail in that sky there. I absolutely love that. I'm just checking my brightness there. The lightning's perfect there. That purplish color really works well as well there. These trees against that backdrop work for me as well. Overall, it's a great image. What I would do though, there's absolutely no interest here. And this sort of, it looks like a building or some kind of light source here kind of detracts your attention away from the main focus of the image, which is clearly the lighting. So what I was thinking with this one is just very simply, square crop. It jumped out at me the second I saw it. There's nothing wrong with cropping your images. There really isn't. So I'll show you what I mean. If we go to, I'll just draw in the composition that I would have used here and it goes something like this, because I like the road. I like the low sort of the viewpoint here as well. And I think that is going to be a much better composition because what Alex has done here is captured that moment really nicely and you don't always have the, the option of getting the perfect composition when you're capturing a thunderstorm like this, which will come and go quickly sometimes. So he's done a really good job of capturing that there. Square crop, and that is a classic image. Nice work, Alex. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, here we have the Sidmouth Tide. We're down at the beach again, and it's a nice composition. I like it. You've got these really interesting rocks here. I'd possibly get a little bit lower in my composition there just bring the camera closer to the floor spread your tripod legs out a bit whatever you need to do just get a little bit lower point of view and I think that would work well but as it is 
you've got these rocks leading you into the image and then the horizon line on the rule of thirds line there when the composition is working really well. We're at Sidmouth Beach, like I said, we've got 15 second exposure, which has smoothed out those, water, those waves a little bit and it introduced some really nice detail into that image. The only thing, it's not really a criticism, but the, what I would do differently with this one is return at sunset or sunrise time. I don't know where, I don't know this area, so I don't know whether, sun, if, whether it would appear in this image or not, but even so, at sunrise or sunset, you're going to get some more colour in that sky because it looks like it's sort of shot towards the middle of the day because you've got these shadows here that aren't particularly long. So shoot it at a more interesting time of day. Look for that golden hour and you're going to get some nice detail in that sky. The composition spot on, I like it. So that's all I would suggest for that one. But it's more of a timing thing when you're going to get out there than a photography composition type thing. So nice image. Let's move on to the next one. Now look at this amazing scene. Amazing. Emerald Lake in Canada. And we've got multiple exposures on the Canon 6D. Now Alex, he said here that he's got multiple exposures. I'd be really interested to understand what he's meaning there. Is it a because it doesn't particularly look like it's a panorama. Is it bracketed? Is it a panorama? I don't really understand totally what Alex means there. So it'd be nice just to have a little bit, when you mention something like that in the description, it's nice just to have a little bit more so the viewer, because on, on Flickr particularly, it's gonna be a photographer probably looking at it. So we just want to know a little bit more information and that really helps people understand the image, understand your work and really appreciate it a little bit more. But overall, I mean, the scene is absolutely great. For me, though, this log here, which is kind of seems to be hanging over the water here, isn't particularly doing anything for me. My interest is immediately dragged to the mountains and this blue, smooth, glass-like water, which is really interesting. I think you could have moved around and maybe used these two things here, the cables or logs submerged into the water, and use them as leading lines, possibly, or... What I was thinking was just go for this straight up panorama along here and use that blue lagoon as you could even include that uh, log there which is a bit more interesting but this blue lagoon with the log with the trees there the mountains in the background those interesting clouds and I think that will be a nice panoramic composition for an image like this but great eye for a scene here Alex uh, nice work on that front just a couple of little composition details and changes that could be made there to really make the most of that beautiful scene. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so here we have Yellowstone Lake, the lovely view of Yellowstone Lake, and indeed it is. I like this image, I don't, and I don't particularly have anything that uh, I would particularly suggest as a correction. Maybe just zoom out a little bit or move back a little bit in your image, what lens are we using there? There's no EXIF info there. Uh, but I just moved back a little bit just so you're not cutting off any of this log here. But it does it does work as a leading line and a bit of foreground interest because it, it is it's an interesting log, and it sort of drags your attention round to the centre area here, and the the colour in those clouds. It, it it's a nice image. I like his processing with those kind of flat pastel colours. It works well for this image, and you've got the mountains in the far distance there, the reflections in the lake, the trees there. It's a nice image. Not the best thing, not the best one in the world. There's not a massive amount of interest in the sky, but it is a nice image. I'd happily look at that for a bit longer. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Here we have the Navajo Sunrise in Monument Valley. This shot was taken at Sunrise in Monument Valley after spending an evening with a Navajo. Very jealous about that. He shot it with the Canon 60 and the 16 to 35 f4. So that's a really nice lens, that one. And overall, it's a nice image shot at a beautiful time of day. Got some beautiful light going on there. And it's not a bad composition overall. What I thought when I saw this image was, firstly, the footprints in the sand don't do anything for me. I know he's on a trip. He's not in particularly in charge of what's going on around him and stuff. So that might have been difficult to ensure that sand stays flat. But that's just something that jumped out at me straight away was I think those footprints detract from it because... When you look at the image, you want to have the feeling that you're out on your own, a bit of natural nature, landscape photography, and the footprints kind of introduce a human element which detracts from that image a little bit. The other thing I thought is if you could have got a bit closer to these rocks here, captured some of the sunlight on the side of that rock maybe as a composition, and then got the sun 
as it's rising just between this little u-shaped rock here and i think that could have been a classic sunrise shot i don't know whether that would have been possible for alex so it's not particularly a criticism of this picture but just something uh, that's the kind of the thoughts that i have when i'm composing a shot like this look where the sun could be placed you've got to sometimes it's about planning because the sun rises at different places in different times of year so use a planning app like photo pills to really nail down where the sun's going to rise and how you can feed that in to your composition when you're planning a landscape shot I, like i say it's not particularly a criticism of alex here because he might not have had that opportunity to plan here but just that's like i say just part of my thought process when i'm putting a shot like this together let's move on to the next one and we have close encounters devil's tower the famous devil's tower featured in the film close encounters of the third kind great film i don't actually remember this in the film myself but it's been quite a while since i've seen it so taken at sunset for me this he's obviously wanted to capture this rock like i said in the last one he might not have had the opportunity to get any closer to it given he was on a guided tour or what the sort of thing alex was doing um it's not my favorite image in the world um but like i say there's not from that position down at the ground there it doesn't look like there's much more he could have done so in the circumstances not too bad but not my favorite shot let's move on to the next one let's try the next one and grand we have grand central station here during my last week of a three-month trip to the us and canada i came to the iconic grand central terminal and it definitely is iconic it's a really nice building isn't it that emerald colored roof the big windows that brickwork it's been blown up in numerous movies hasn't it and it's always rebuilt it just nicely i know that's not the case i know it's make-believe i know it's the movies i know it's hollywood but that's not a bad image i like it the, the composition isn't probably one i would choose when i'm taking uh, architectural photography like this i like to be square on to the sort of thing he's shooting uh, where but to be fair it's not a bad composition alex has gone in that gone in at it on an angle and that long exposure of one second really adds to that image and you see that some of the movement in the people some of them are stood still for over a second so they've sort of been captured in the image some of them are moving it's a nice scene gives a nice feel about the buzz that's going on in the station at that time another thing you can try with an image like this in a busy area is doing a much longer exposure sort of maybe three or four minutes and everyone the vast majority of people will not stand still for three to four minutes in a place like this so you'll end up with an image where there's very few people in the image and it can be really effective because they're not places that you see ever empty so when you use these long exposures to remove the people from the scene it can really result in an interesting image and that works in places like this or on busy street places busy streets and the lot you can remove people with long exposure like i said i'm talking about long exposure more now because it's really interesting to me and that's probably some a video that i will create i've written about it before but i want to create a video to show you what i mean because it can produce some really unique images so let's move on to the next one and we have the grand canyon now i've been to the grand canyon myself if you saw some of those pictures that i took when i was 16 not so long ago and this is a nice image of the grand canyon i like it a lot actually he's got the really nice sunrise going on there what i would have done probably i like his composition as well you've got these bushes here the rocks leading you in to that horizon and that sunrise i'm not sure I, i'd just be really interested to see what the light would have looked like a few minutes later as it's just risen a little bit more and it's going to start casting the really nice morning sun rays onto these rocks you can already see it starting a little bit over here but as the sun went up a little bit more it would have been casting that light across the foreground of the image here and i think it would have made the shot even better it might be that it's just alex's processing you could probably enhance these colors down here a little bit more in post processing and that'd be interesting to see if you could but that's just my thoughts with that image really nice image though i like it and it gives an it tells a nice story of that sunrise at the grand canyon on that day let's move on to the next one okay so here we have the horseshoe bend it's a classic shot isn't it you do see this a lot and it's an amazing scene there's absolutely no doubt about it the problem for me with this image is there's not a massive amount of detail in that sky probably because it was during the middle of the day there's some sort of haze here but the main problem for me with this image is just the, the it feels over processed the shadows have been raised too much for me in this image 
because understandably it's it's going to be necessary to some extent because this is not this the sun isn't shining on this canyon here so it would be much darker than the sky here so you're going to have to raise the shadows a little bit to bring out the detail in this area but for me for alex he's just gone a little bit too far for me there and it doesn't particularly look realistic but that might just be me that's how i feel let's move on to the next one and this is a swamp uh, a trip around a swamp near new, new orleans and it looks it's a nice swamp isn't it for me this is not the best image because you can see this boat here that is full of what looks like kids and parents and tourists and it just detracts from the sort of nature natural world uh scene that this you sort of want this picture to be however there's nothing wrong with that but what i would have done in this circumstance is being is photographing people and alex may have done that he might not want to share a picture of his family and friends and stuff online that's fair enough i would have used this scene to have a, as just as a really nice backdrop for a nice portrait shot of a family member friends you can even shoot the other people on the boat and capture some nice sort of documentary images of people on this trip and that's what i would have done for that one uh, but as it is that is just a little bit of too much of a snapshot for me but not to end on a critical note let's go back to the album but overall i think alex has some really nice images i like this one i love this one in the square crop mode that's really nicely composed some good images overall there and i think alex is he's creating some nice images after about three years of shooting and he's definitely on the right course to be capturing more photography and landscape photography and the key is and he's already done it he spent three months out in the us and canada dedicated to photography great thing to do do more of it alex and you'll be capturing more and more good images so make sure you follow alex find him on flickr find him on instagram and make sure you give him a follow so i hope you enjoyed that let me know what you think down below in the comments let me know what let alex know what you think of his work as well keep it constructive keep it friendly and if you want to have your pictures for critiques make sure you head over to the website fill in your details on the form and put a Flickr album with 10, 10 of your best shots in there and I'll take a look at them as soon as I can. Okay, if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel for new videos every Sunday and every Wednesday and I'll see you on another one very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out.